Hello, it's John Bruno again, Fiber Instrument Sales. Uh, I found out from my director that uh, we haven't, or I haven't done a technical video in 19 months. And that's shame on me. Uh, we've been doing a lot of promotional videos, but I haven't done a technical video. So it's time to see me a little more often with some more technical videos. And I appreciate when you guys watch my videos. I've got a lot of feedback from everyone. So today the topic is going to be attenuators. So attenuators are using the word attenuation, which is forced a forced loss of signal. Now, our goal has always been in fiber, and you'll know what I've always said in the past, clean everything, keep the attenuation as low as possible. But there's times when we really need to cut our power, and we're gonna use an attenuator. And there's different versions of attenuators. So, first and foremost, we have fixed and variable. So a fixed attenuator will give us a dB loss that is unchangeable. It is what it is made to do, 5 dB, 10. A variable attenuator allows us to change in steps. We can increase or decrease the amount of attenuation. Well, you know, the first question that needs to be answered is why would we want to attenuate a signal? One of the things, and we see this a lot in single mode, is single mode fibers, we tend to use very powerful lasers. One of our issues is when we have a single mode fiber and it's not going a significant enough distance to cut our power, we can actually push too much power to a device. And I know that it's, it's kind of opposite of the way we think. We all, all of us tend to understand that when we have a a piece of equipment and they have a detector, it has a low power range. And if we come in with power below that lowest range, well, it's not gonna work. We've gone too far of a distance. Maybe we can do some things to take some attenuation away. Maybe we have to amplify the signal, but eventually we get too low in our signal. Well, the opposite happens and can is also an issue for us and, and can be damaging to our equipment. When we have very powerful lasers, so whenever you have a transmission receive equipment, you're going to get an output power and then the detector is gonna have an input power, right? And it's gonna have a high and a low number. We don't wanna to be too hot of a signal. When we're too hot of a signal, it's going to not work. The detector won't detect that light and it actually can damage the equipment on the other side. So I know we've always thought about low attenuation, but there are times when we need to reduce our power. And an attenuator will do that for us. Again, variable or fixed. So again, too much power is going to be an issue. Uh, let's refer to a, even a power meter, let's say. So an FIS power meter, one of the ones that we manufacture, I have the, st the statistics here, the, the specs. When you get a typical power meter, uh, you're going to have a low and high range, even for the meter. Our handheld unit, our non-cable TV version, our standard version, goes down to as low as negative 65 dBm up to positive 5 dBm. Okay, a lot of our signals that we're using in fiber to the home or long distance transmissions are going to be hotter than that. I've seen where if we take a normal standard power meter and plug it into a, anything above the high range at this, at this location, uh, for this one particular, plus five dBm. If we go hotter than that, I've seen where you can actually smoke the equipment. You can actually destroy the meter. So we have also have cable TV versions of our, of our power meters. And what we do is we shift the high and the low power. So the cable TV version won't go as low. So right, the other one was negative 65 dBm. The cable TV version goes down to only 40, negative 45. But the difference is we shift the high power. Our cable TV version of uh, this one here is positive 23 dBm. So you can see where we're gonna wanna use a cable TV version of our meter to even just to take readings because too much power can damage those, that equipment also. Now, when we need to cut power, this is when the attenuator comes in. Again, variable and fixed, I know I've covered this. Most of the time, if it's an inline installation permanent, we're just going to use a fixed attenuation. So we're going to plug in our meter and we're going to say, okay, we're so many dB too hot, we need to cut that down. Now you can order them, we typically stock them 5, 10, 15, 20 decibels. You can order them in one decibel increment. So we can go one, two, three in one decibel increments. What we do is we determine how much power we need to get us into that sweet spot and we're going to drop down that power. Now let's talk about uh, attenuators and kind of their histories. So I've been around for a while. So 
I remember when I started in uh, 1996, Menofu, uh, this was a very popular attenuator. These, we call these it's washer attenuators, and they came in a 10-pack, and there was a lot of different colors for these attenuators. The different colors were different thicknesses, and these were really only used for ST connectors and the older style SMAs. And what we have here is a little washer and basically that will go over the ferrule and it just doesn't allow you to plug the connector all the way in. So we're doing an air gap to create attenuation. Very popular for quite a while, not nearly as popular today. Again, just going to go through some of the different histories. So that would be fixed. Each one, each size would be a fixed amount of attenuation. We have another interesting one here. This is a three-step attenuator. It was very popular quite a while back. This three-step attenuator is really, and it's pretty basic in design, it has three loops. And what you can do is you can go, you can push your fiber through here, your jacket, and go one loop, two loops, or three, depending on the amount of attenuation. And there's different ones for different attenuations. This one is ranges from two to seven decibels. So it's like two, four, and seven, depending on the number of loops you go through. It's just a mechanical attenuation. So fixed, but variable slightly in the way that we can pick uh, three different attenuations. Uh, again, nothing more than just causing a, a bend, a macro bend in our fiber using, using this uh, attenuator. Now, as, as we've progressed, we, we can see some more popular attenuators. When we talk fixed, the most popular would be inline bulkhead attenuators. So this one here and this one here, these are just normal everyday bulkhead adapters. This happens to be SC to SC. What they have in here is a neutral filter, and what this does is this filters light. So this one here is five decibels, and this one's 10, and we can get these in all different uh, attenuation values. Uh, so a fixed one, so this would be SCU PCs, female to female. Uh, you know, another one like this here is a 5 dB, uh, and we usually have it marked on the side here so we know. And don't make the mistake of putting a, an attenuated bulkhead in when you meant to use a, a, a straight through, because you're going to see a lot of loss through there. Uh, this one, similar concept, but instead of female to female, this is SCAPC, male to SCAPC female. So basically we're going to plug in our connector here and, and do some, some attenuation. So we can do male and female, female to female, depending on what you require. Again, these are all your fixed ones. Now, um, and they come in different connector styles. This is an ST one, again, just with a filter in there. We also have variable attenuators. So why would we use one? Typically not at a permanent installation, maybe equipment testing. Uh, we're going to induce attenuation to see how low that that uh, receiver can go uh, and still detect, right? Maybe do some checking. Uh, we do have electronic ones uh, that you can actually uh, manually on, on the front panel, you can change the attenuation. Those, those to be, tend to be fairly expensive. I look like a little handheld piece of equipment. Now, some other variable ones. Uh, this one here, uh, this one is a clip-on variable attenuator, and it comes with two screws. And basically, when we slide our, if we pull these apart, slide our jacket, we can do one or two screws. And basically, we're just putting mechanical pressure on the connector to vary the attenuation. In fact, this one, uh, at different wavelengths, we have different attenuation because 1550, when we bend a fiber, 1550 attenuates significantly more than 1310. You can see uh, on this spec sheet, if we use a single screw, we can go up to 9 decibels at 1310. If we use a single screw, we can go to 18 decibels. On, if we use both of the screws, we can go 16 decibels at 1310 and 37 dB uh, using both at 1550. So that's a variable attenuator. We have other variables. This is an inline variable attenuator, and basically it has about 2 meters of fiber, and we have the attenuator in the middle here. And we have a screw that we can tighten and loosen. So this is going to basically put pressure on it. This goes in line, so we'll put this on each side of our connection. Uh, this one here spec sheet tells us that we can go. So just by having the connectors here on average, even if we had no attenuation on the attenuator, you're going to get at least 0.6 decibels for the connections, about 0.3 per single mode connector. Uh, this one can go up to 
let's see, the spec sheet tells me this one can go, and this is using SMF 28E plus fiber. So that's important to understand too. We're gonna talk about how that affects us here. Uh, the newer fiber uh, can bend more, the ultra fiber, without having as much attenuation. Uh, this one here can go up to 50 decibels. Again, just by changing that, that screw position, clamping down. So this is another variable attenuator. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of a display of some different ones. This one here is interesting. Uh, this one is an inline, like a bulkhead, but it's variable because what it does is it creates an air gap, almost like the washers. We have a little key here and it fits in here and basically it's just pulling the connectors apart. So the farther apart they are, the higher the attenuation will be with this with this uh, attenuator. This one can go, uh, let's see, about up to 20 decibels and using single or multi-mode on this one. So again, variable or fixed. So. We get this, we get, well, again, these bulkhead adapters, we get a lot of these used, like I said, fiber to the home, when the houses are close to the head end or where the, jet, the signal's being generated. We haven't lost enough signal just naturally in the cable. We haven't driven enough distance in our car to bring that signal down. So we're gonna use an inline attenuator. The bulkheads are very popular. Again, make sure you don't use a bulkhead attenuator where you were just trying to use a bulkhead adapter. So you're gonna see some attenuation. What I'm gonna do here is show you the effect of these filters and what I have set up, and Jeff will show this here in a minute, I have two test boxes that I use in my classes. Uh, each one of these boxes is about four kilometers and I've got them hooked, plugged together. So we have an eight kilometer-ish run. Now, the OTDR that I'm using is an Exfo FTB720, and this has an APC adapter. So what we've done ahead of time is, you know my mantra, clean, clean, clean. Uh, we clean the port, we clean this connection. Now, the, the cables themselves, the boxes are UPC. So I'm just using a small jumper to go from APC to UPC with an adapter to get into these boxes. So we've got like a two meter cable. Remember, I know we're talking about attenuators, but never plug a UPC blue into an APC green connection. And you can see this port has a green collar and has a picture of an APC connector. Not only will we get uh, terrible results, and I've seen this happen uh, firsthand, we, if we put that UPC into the APC slot, we can damage the connector here, and that's a very expensive repair, which we want to, of course, avoid. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is fire this OTR up into real time, so we're gonna monitor that fiber, and I'll show you the trace, and then I'm gonna add my inline attenuators, and you can see the effect that that attenuator has, between the two boxes. So we're gonna set it all up. Now, one thing you're gonna notice, and I'm gonna show this when we first start, is with our OTRs, we pick a pulse width, how fast we flash the light. In real time on this one, I think it's 10 nanoseconds or maybe 30. Once we add that attenuator, it's important to understand, attenuation is the simulation also of distance. So if we had a 5 dB attenuator, you know, we're simulating like another 10, 15 uh, kilometers of fiber. So what that's going to do, that will affect your pulse width because the longer the cable, the longer the pulse. I'm hoping that when we pl plug this in, and you'll see that the trace in real time is going to get really wavy and really dirty. And you'll see I'll, I'll manually move up maybe from 30, I think the next might, might be 50 or 100 nanoseconds. And you'll see that trace clean up and you'll see that drop. So let's do some a uh, little bit of OTDRs with our attenuators and show you that effect of those inline attenuators. All right, so we've got the uh, OTDR set up, and you can see here I've put a 10 kilometer range because we've got eight about eight kilometers of fiber, so we can take up the screen effectively. Uh, you can see I've added a 30 nanosecond pulse. Now I'll do a timed test here, so we have a 10 second. Uh, test here for both wavelengths. So again, this is an averaging test. I'm gonna tip push into real time here in a minute, but let's look. All right, now that we're, we've finished testing here, we can see uh, our events, and I believe it's number four or five here. I think it's five. This is where the two boxes come together. You can see that's your reflective event. Now, when I highlight that, we can see it's at 4,170 meters.
you know, it's the end of the first first box. And at 1550, you can see here, it's 0 0.05 attenuation. If we go over to 1310, it's 0 0.053 dB. Now, I show you the scan because when we do the fixed attenuators, the, the attenuation is going to vary. So if we have a 5 or a 10 dB attenuator, it's not going to be exactly the same attenuation of both wavelengths. Now, the variable attenuators or the attenuators that put physical bending in the fiber, those will, those will differ tremendously because, uh, again, bending at 1550, uh, uh, an attenuative bend, a uh, yeah, macro bend, is always higher at 1550. So, if I do that uh, three-step that does the physical bending, you're going to see a, quite a variation in the attenuation. So we're going to flip over to real time. I don't want to save this. And now we're going to look at my fiber live. And you can see we have a pretty crisp, clean trace. You can see here where the two boxes come together. Right there, you can see when I let it go. Now this, again, is my just my normal bulkhead or uh, mating sleeve. We're going to replace this with a 5 dB attenuator. Now, this is pretty good. I, this is, I'm glad this happened. Uh, this is kind of what I told you was going to happen. You can see this is still the end, but this second section after the attenuator is not looking very good. This is a function of not, ha again, that attenuator simulating longer distance with loss. So you can either have loss in one point or in distance. It's the same thing. It's a simulation of distance, of power. And so our pulse width is set wrong. So I'm going to go from a 30 to a 50 nanosecond pulse. And there we go. It cleans that trace up nice. And right there, you can see there's your attenuation at that box. Before, this was a nice small half a decibel bend where now you can see that's the inline five decibel attenuator. Maybe we can take a, a scan. Now remember we we're about half a decibel uh, when we did the first one with just the regular bulkhead. Let's check it out now and see the variations between the two wavelengths and see what the attenuation is here. So we're a couple seconds, we'll have this all set. We'll see it does the 1550, it's gonna display first. And we can see here that, let me roll up here. Boy, it doesn't like it at all, does it? There's your five decibels. Now again, we're at about 0.5, so it's doing about 4.4-ish there at this wavelength at 1550. But you can, and again, it's failing. It's not too thrilled with it. Now let's look at the 1310 value we get here. Probably going to see red right there, 5.81. So it's a little closer to that 5 at the 1310. But again, we're, we're really close into those values. Uh, so here we go. Let's go back to real time. And I'm going to take out, let's not save that. I'm going to take out the 5 decibel attenuator, put in a nice 10 dB. One of the things I didn't do on that first one, and I know I had cleaned everything ahead of time, but let's just clean them again. Let's see what that 10 decibel looks like, and let's see if it also has to have that pulse width turned up. And you can see again, a much more significant drop. That's what we're expecting, and we don't have a real pretty trace after that long attenuate, that high attenuation. So I'm gonna pop this up another pulse width. Okay, getting a little cleaner. We're gonna have to go way up here. There we go, not terrible here, fairly clean. You can see, look at that tremendous drop right there. So if we if we analyze this, let's see the variation. So remember again, with our bulkhead, it was about half a decibel. Let's see what it is with the, with the 10 dB attenuated bulkhead. And then next I'm gonna put in this guy, I'll put this mechanical one in that's doing physical bending, and let's see the variations between the attenuation. So, we're down to a second and we're doing an analyze and then you're going to see red for sure okay we went from half a decibel to 9.6 so that variation between the 5 and the 10 is about the same right at 1550 we're off by what by 0.4 db ish from from the number it's about the same here now let's flip over to 13 
and there we go 10.1 again a little more to right on the nose the attenuation at the 1310 but still effective at both okay so there we go that's two inline attenuators showing you the effect so if we're coming in too hot here we've just dropped that and now we might be in a nice number that we want so we're not overdriving that receiving equipment so let's look at real time let's look at this inline attenuator. Uh, I'm only gonna do one bend through here. It can become a little cumbersome putting it through such a small channel. So we're gonna get away from these attenuators. We'll go right back to a straight bulkhead and yes, I'm gonna clean it again. You gotta do as you say and say as you do, I guess. And we're gonna clean that again. You can see I'm still in real time and that box should pop in and we're we're back to a decent half a decibel here. Now let's let's feed this in where we should see that right there near this connector also. You gotta understand too, now that we're using ultra fiber. So we're using the bend and sensitive fiber that can take more bending. The numbers that you see on your attenuators for expected attenuation aren't always going to match. So why is that? Because we have bend sensitive. You're going to have less attenuation using ultra than you would the previous version of single mode from Corning, the E+. So you can see here in the screen, in our real time where we've added that and there's your attenuation we can probably back down the pulse width a little bit here and still have a fairly clean trace and there it is so let's hit another test here and see you know what's reported about this and what we really got here again not nearly the physical bending one here uh, not nearly as popular as it used to be uh, we do sell some but again uh, the fixed ones are much more popular. The ones that are using uh, the filter. So we can see we've got both wavelengths finished. Here. And so look here. Now this is where you're going to see the difference. Now I'm just guessing, but knowing what I know about fiber, I'm going to tell you that this is probably going to be significantly less at the 1310 wavelength. Okay, now what do you notice on the cover of this? This is designed, the 2dB is 1310, right? So we're at 1550, we're getting four and a half decibels there. So that added about four dB if we add the connectors at the half a dB. Now let's look and see what it did here. Let's see if I was right. We should have significantly less. And again, did just what I wanted it to do. Look at this. This is half a decibel. Now this is reported to do too, but remember, we're using ultra fiber. We're so we're actually showing you how much better this fiber is. So if this was E plus, Coring SMF 20 E plus, we would probably be closer to two decibels here. But because we're using the bend and sensitive fiber, as you can see, the attenuation is significantly better. So that is an improvement of the fiber. I know that makes this less effective as an attenuator. We might want to go through more than one channel there, but you can see uh, quite a difference between the two wavelengths because again 1550 bends are just so much more uh, attenuation at that other wavelength I hope maybe this helped you a little bit with attenuators and talking about why we're using them again snuffing the power down a little bit uh, I've heard these called in the industry pads so I've heard the word pad before we're padding down the signal but you know I want to apologize again for not getting too many videos out in the last over a year, 19 months. And I'm going to, I promise you we're going to see some more, but I hope this was uh, kind of enlightening for you to understand the effect of the different types of attenuators, fixed and variable. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope to get some feedback and I hope you guys like my video. Look for some more. Thank you. Check out our channel and hit the subscribe button for new videos.